Welcome. In this video, we'll show you all you need to know about the transporter real-time relooping effect. Transporter continuously records incoming audio into a rolling buffer and triggers loops in that audio based on detected transients. Transients are what we call sudden changes in level, such as the initial volume spike of a drum hit or guitar note, which typically last 50 milliseconds or less. By analyzing the audio signal, Transporter identifies transient peaks and uses them to trigger two independent loops using that audio, allowing for dynamic and responsive playback. Parameters like sensitivity, spread and bouncing rate help fine-tune how the transients are detected and how the loops are spread in the stereo space, ensuring precise and automated variations on the incoming audio. The display shows the input waveform, which is 20 to 22 seconds at 48 kHz or 44.1 kHz respectively. The markers jumping around show the playback position for loops A and B. The thin markers indicate the loop end, so you can see the loop length. Click the display to manually reset the loops regardless of transients. The top block updates loop A, the middle will update both loops, and the bottom updates loop B. Notice the highlighting for each region when you mouse over them. Let's first look at the Options menu on the top right. Here's where the theming options are. Select Flush on Pause slash Stop to delete the audio buffer when FL Studio starts and stops to prevent residual loops playing when you're working on something else. The look ahead option prevents clicks when looping, which may happen due to level discontinuities, by adding some plugin latency and quick crossfading between loop end and loop start. For very fast paced material, it's better to have this option off, as transients may be impacted and less audible. Select mono to stereo if you're working with a mono sound source. Stereo will be summed to mono and processed through the plugin when it's selected. Stereo to stereo is the default option. We assume you're working with stereo audio, which is processed through the plugin in true stereo. Transient source selects the stereo channels used to detect transients. Left, right, or left and right. Normally, left and right is best, although if there are large differences between the left and right audio channels, choose the one best suited to transient detection. As we saw earlier, Transporter includes three audio channels the unaffected or dry signal, and two sum to mono loops, A and B. In the loop panel, you set the minimum time between transient detections, sensitivity to transients, ratio between loops, panning effects, and dynamic adjustments to loop lengths for creating rhythmic and dynamic audio loops. Think of sensitivity like the threshold shown in the earlier animation, where turning the slider up lowers the threshold. Note that higher sensitivity increases the likelihood of false positives or unwanted detections. Whenever a transient is detected, the control will flash. Use the visual indication to get a better idea if the detections are in sync with the beat. Minimum length A is the minimum time it takes in seconds from the last transient detection for the next detection to trigger a new loop start. Transients detected within this period are ignored. A to B ratio sets the minimum length of loop B as a ratio to loop A's minimum length. Let's say loop A is 1 second and the ratio is 2, then minimum for loop B is 500 milliseconds. Ratios will affect the rhythm or groove when both loops are active. 
Odd ratios will sound more complex than even ratios. And higher ratios will increase loop B's density. Spread pans the two voices. To statically pan left and right, move the slider right of center. To the left of center, a sine wave LFO adds an auto pan effect from 0 to 10 Hz. In the BIOS panel, you can set the characteristics of the loops to decide if they repeat with a predictable rhythm or evolve and change over time. In probabilistic mode, loop characteristics change randomly on each loop. This mode is great for generating constantly varying loop sounds. In deterministic mode, loop characteristics are related to the playback head's position in the audio buffer. This mode works well with automating loop updates and generates more predictable repeating patterns. Reverse sets the probability of a segment being played in reverse. Turn this up all the way if you want every segment to be played in reverse. Shift sets the probability for a segment to be played at the original speed or shifted by one octave. Same logic applies here. Turn this up all the way if you want every segment to be shifted. Use the down up knob to set the probability of the octave shifting up or down. Set it to 1 to have all octave shifts go up. 0 for all down. And 0.5 for equal chances of both. If the shift knob is at 0, the down up knob will have no effect. The modes here determine how transporter will react to incoming transients. With auto selected, loop events are triggered by transients detected in the input signal, according to the minimum loop length you set with the minimum length A parameter and the A to B ratio. When you want to trigger loops manually, select Ignore Transients. That bypasses the transient detection mechanism. Loops will stay consistent until Ignore Transients is turned back off and a new transient is detected. Or when a transient is manually triggered by clicking on the waveform display. This is automatable, by the way. Bypass transporter here. Bouncing mode adjusts the loop length automatically at each cycle. Loop length variations follow accelerating or decelerating behaviors, simulating real-life events like bouncing balls, hence the name. <laughs> bouncing rate. When in bouncing mode, the rate parameter accelerates loop length changes. The loops get shorter for positive values. Or the opposite. Loops get longer and therefore decelerate for negative values. Adaptive mode automatically adjusts the loop lengths based on the detected transient rate. When minimum length A is set to small values under 200 milliseconds, the final loop lengths follow the input trend. More transients in the input result in smaller loops. And vice versa, large minimum length A values will convert higher transient rate in the input to larger minimum loop lengths, resulting in a low transient rate in the output. Synchronize loop length to tempo here. Transients are detected as in auto mode but loop lengths are static and determined by project BPM. This is probably going to be your preferred mode. And 
flush clears out the audio buffer and resets the right head to the start if you want to start over with new audio input. This is going to temporarily mute the plugin's output, even the dry signal. So when you automate this, which you can by the way, be mindful of that. That's all the basic functions of Transporter. One of the obvious use cases of Transporter is to create glitchy fills in drum boss tracks or even on the master, like so. When you're making music with very slow moving harmony, Transporter can add new depths when synchronized to tempo and manually re-triggering using the reverse and octave shifting features. With that, we've reached the end of this tutorial. We hope this video helps you get started using Transporter in your workflow. Don't forget to check the video description for a link to the manual and the demo projects we made for this video. Happy music making!